Hi you guys, Abby and Lindsay here today. We are talking about all of our March favorites. And this month we have put together um, a sewing favorite, a sort of sewing favorite, something sewing related, and then something that's not sewing related at all because we actually have lives outside of sewing and things that we love outside of sewing and so we thought we would share that with you guys as well. So Abby's going to kick us off with her first sewing related favorite. Okay, so I don't know if you guys have ever heard of Republic de Chabon. Excuse my lack of a French accent there, but I have been eyeing all you people overseas making a lot of their patterns. I looked into them. They were only in French. I didn't think I could figure it out myself. Um, I'm not, I can't translate it into English. So I was recently um, looking, following the uh, Style Maker Fabrics blog tour. I know you guys probably watched our video and have been following along with that blog tour. And one of the girls, um, the Sarah Project, you can look her up on Instagram, posted a picture which she had made from the fabric with Style Maker Fabrics. Um, this blouse that I've had my eye on forever, and it's the, I would call it in American, the Martha blouse. I'm not sure how they pronounce it in French, um, but I have had my eye on this blouse forever. It's a super cute, flowy kind of peplum blouse, um, really gathered. It's lower in the front than in the back, and so I asked her, I'm like, did you translate that yourself? And she said, no, they're starting to translate their patterns into English. So I immediately purchased the pattern. Um, I'm so excited that they're translating, and I wanted to share this with you guys, because if I don't know, maybe you don't know either. But go on their website, their PDF pattern, so you can download them instantly. Not all of the patterns have been translated yet, but a few more that I'm planning on purchasing are the Georgina dress. It is super cute. It's um, a v-neck in the back, real low, great for summer. And then the Maeva shirt, it's this cute little button-up peplum blouse. And I'm just really excited to sew up some of these new patterns from them. Cool. That's that. And my first, um, my sewing related favorite is um, a new sort of take on Seamwork Magazine's patterns. If you don't know, Seamwork Magazine is a project of Colette Patterns. Um, Colette has been in my pattern library from the beginning. I want to say their shorts were one of the first things I ever made. Yeah, um, their they dress have, was my first project. Oh, was it? Theirs, yeah. And the, they have a free pattern, the Sorbetto Top, which mm -hmm. I'm sure every beginner pattern, yes. every beginner sewist um, has tried that out. If you haven't, it's completely free and it's super cute. Um, so anyways, Colette is like very well established in the sewing world and they launched a magazine uh, an online magazine maybe a year ago, yeah. maybe a little bit longer. Yeah, least, um, yeah. And with your magazine subscription, you would get two patterns of your choice. And these patterns are all intended to be done in three hours or less. Um, and it's always just like a fresh new take, um, something new to add to your library. So um, this past month, they launched something called Paper Block, pa paper block Scissors. And it is basically a pattern modification to one of their existing patterns. So they started with their Katarina dress, which is basically a spaghetti strap, kind of like a blousey, bodiced, elastic waist dress. Um, it's super cute, made out of anything from a silk to like a voile. Mm -hmm. And the pattern modification that they sent out with paper block scissors is how to create a flounce that, mm -hmm. um, yeah, that I updates. Look at that. Yeah, I'm wanting to make something like that. Yeah, that updates the blousey um, bodice to more of a, a flounce, where you get that kind of um, flowy, tiered look. Um, that is all over the place right now. I just went spring shopping, and everything was like a double layer of some sort. So that's really in style right now. Yeah, I think it's a great way to get that whole like crop top look mm -hmm. without actually having to show any okay. midriff or yeah. anything like that. So in addition to it being awesome, just because you could make the Katarina dress now look completely different, one, one version versus the other, it also, by going through the process of doing it, the, of modifying the pattern piece, you actually end up learning a lot about pattern making and pattern modifications. They don't give you a PDF of the modified pattern piece, they walk you through each step of how to take that bodice piece and to turn it into a flounce. So it would be super helpful to take that same 
um, technique and apply it to a sleeve pattern. And you can make like a cute flutter sleeve or take a even a pencil skirt and turn it into like a really flowy skirt. So yeah. what is your sort of sewing favorite? Sort of sewing favorite would be this new little guy. Um, found this super cute hedgehog at West Elm. My sewing space has lots of metallic gold in it, so anytime I see metallic gold somewhere, some way to incorporate it, incorporate it into my sewing room, I just have to get it. I also really have a thing for cute little animal figures. My sewing room also has elephants in it that I've spray painted metallic gold, so I'm gonna found this guy, just had to have him. So I brought him home not knowing what I was gonna do with him, and then decided, well, how perfect to store my sewing needles in. So he's just perfect, he sits behind my sewing machine, and um, I can put my needles in there, and he, he just adds a lot of character to my sewing table. Also, keep what, I, what you use to change the needle with, so I always have it handy. I also think it would be great, I don't know if you've ever seen, a lot of people will show you how to um, attach a magnet to any kind of thing. You can do a teacup, a little bowl, and then store pins in it. So it would be like a little magnetic pin holder. So a couple different ways to use him in your sewing room. He's so um, cute. He needs yeah. a name. Well, I figured out he's a boy for some reason. I keep calling it a him. Yeah, I think um, he's a boy too. Hedgy? Hedgy the Hedgy? <laughs> I don't know. If you thinking, think of anything, let me know. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking Henry. Henry, Henry and Hedgy are kind of cute. That's he so looks cute. like a Henry to me. What do you guys think? Oh, I am Henry. <laughs> but he's still available at West Elm now. I checked. Um, so you can pick him up if you think he's cute and he would fit into your sewing room. Yep, link below for that. Definitely. Um, my sort of sewing is something that I have been doing um, while I'm sewing. I started in January a book challenge. It's a it's a 12 month book challenge, and each month that gives you some, um, kind of like a, a a challenge of what to read that month. So the first month it was a book that's going to be made into a movie. The second month it was a book recommended to you by a friend. Um, anyway, so I've actually been keeping up with it, and I'm on my third book. And there's really no way for me to actually get that much reading done, just sitting down and reading a hard book. So for me, audiobooks are the, really the way to go. Um, and I, I get all my audiobooks through Audible. And to me, it actually ends up being a... A, it's obviously a different experience. I mean, you have a professional actor or actress who's reading it, so it, it helps the story kind of come alive a little bit. Instead of just the voices in your head interpreting mm -hmm. how it's being read, you have somebody who's probably worked with the author um, kind of bring these characters to life. So I listen to Audible in my car, whenever I'm in traffic, whenever I'm just like waiting around for someone or a meeting or whatever. Um, but I also listen to Audible whenever I am sewing. I sew in large chunks of time so it kind of helps me um, I guess multitask yes. is the best way to explain it. Yeah that's I don't read a lot of books because on my spare time I'm sewing so I find myself just putting on Pandora and then it's the same music or putting on Law and Order repeat so that would help me read some books which I do love to read mm -hmm. and then sew which I also love. Yeah it, yeah. Ma it makes me feel so much more like I don't know, educated? Is that weird to say? I feel like people who read are typically smarter in my mind, so I think I'm one of them. You know, I've read three books this year, and that right. sounds, you know, so cultured or right. something. Right. But there are so many great books out there. there a lot Some of them are being time. made into movies eventually, mm -hmm. so it's always um, fun to kind of be a part of that experience before it becomes completely mainstream. But right. um, So audible.com actually does a promotion for its new members. You can click the link below and get a free 30-day trial. During that trial period, they'll let you download two books of your choice. There are like hundreds of thousands of titles to choose from in every single genre. Um, and so um, you can try out two books and if you like it, great. And if not, you can cancel at the end of your trial. Also, something else really cool about Audible that I don't think a lot of people know is that they have like a listen guarantee. And if you're listening to your Audible book and for any reason you don't like it, including mm -hmm. you don't like the story, mm -hmm. you can return it and get ah, a credit for another awesome. book. Yeah. So I've returned a couple of books. One of them, the storyline did not match up with the description and I was just having a really hard time getting into it and I just knew I wasn't going to finish. So I returned that one. And then another time the, um, the like recording was terrible. Mm -hmm. Like I don't know 
why they went so rogue on recording <laughs> the actual audiobook, but you can hear the woman breathing like like heavily <laughs> breathing at, between every sentence. Yeah, that would <laughs> it was get annoying. Really awkward. So I return that, and it's like no questions asked. They don't really care why you return it. You just um, get to pick another book of your choice, which I mean, I love that. That's, That's great. Okay, what is your non sewing? Okay, so for my non sewing is actually something I got in my March Pop Sugar box. You can make it a little sewing if you need to justify a purchase right now, but it is this necklace that I'm wearing right now. It's just super cute, super unique. It's made out of thread. So perfect for a seamstress is this little five tassel, it's like an ombre kind of um, design with the colors they chose. And if you don't know about Pop Sugar, it's something Lindsay actually introduced me to. It's a monthly subscription to a, a curated box. So you get this box every month, you have no idea what's going to be in it, it's so much fun when it arrives. You open it up and it's just a variety of things in your box. So there'll be beauty items, there'll be things you can wear like jewelry. We got a scarf um, in February that was actually worth $125. Yeah, it really it's expensive like silk. silk. Yeah. yeah. Um, there's also things for your home, things you can eat. So it's just really interesting things that you may not have thought to buy for yourself. but. Um, even brands you've never even heard of before yeah. like, and a lot of times they'll send you a coupon code for the brands right. too, so, so you, you like it get, yeah you can, you get can yeah I've actually purchased a couple of different things mm -hmm. from items I've discovered in my pop sugar box yeah they're a lot of fun um, this necklace was actually made exclusively for the March pop sugar box but I googled it to see if you guys get your hands on it too and there are people selling it. So I found it on eBay, um, Trade Z, and they're selling it for cheaper than it's worth. This is um, a $40 necklace. So I saw some people selling it for as cheap as $250. So check it out. I'll put it in the comment, uh, the description below so you can Google that exact wording and find one for yourself. Cool. Um, so many of you, or if anybody follows me on my personal social media, then you know I went to Key West last week. Um, it was my first time there, and a lot like Charleston, Key West is a walking town. You know, you park at your hotel, and then you really never get back in your car again. Everything's just so close together. It doesn't make sense to drive from place to place. Right. So um, I knew I would be wearing, like, summery dresses, and I just really wanted some comfortable shoes. And I don't know about you, but even wearing flip-flops all day is still mm -hmm. not comfortable for me. Yeah, yeah, I feel like my heels hurt or my arches start to hurt mm -hmm. and so I knew I wanted some cute shoes that would be comfortable so I initially went on the hunt for some espadrilles and kind of came up empty-handed I don't know did espadrilles like go out of style or something That's all I really wear <laughs> yeah <laughs> so I wasn't able to find any but I did stumble upon um, these shoes here and they're called corks k-o-r-k-s um, obviously they have a cork bottom but um, I was in Belk and looking for the espadrilles. I figured, okay, I'm not going to find the espadrilles. So I just started picking up wedges, and these were one of them. And so um, I tried them on, and you guys, these are like walking on clouds. They're like little <laughs> pillows. Like the bottom of your feet are just so supported, and they're just so comfortable. And as I was trying them on, a lady came up to me and said, oh, my God, are those corks? And I said, yeah, they are. And she said, I got them before I went on a trip. And they are so comfortable. So I kind of felt like, you know, our worlds were a little bit parallel in that moment. And yeah. that she was speaking specifically to me. So I had to get them. Um, but proof's in the pudding. I went to Key West our first day there. We walked seven miles around that little town. And not one blister. Uh, not one achy bone. Nothing hurt at all. Yeah, I was able to wear these the whole trip outside of... Um, the shoes that I wore to dinner. I wore these on the airplane. I wore these walking around. Um, absolutely everywhere. I love them. You can feel they're really light. Yeah, super light. Yeah. And I think it's great, you know, being in Charleston, it's what, the number one tourist destination still in the United yes. States? So we yes. are often out to dinner and I see people come in and they're wearing sneakers. Yeah. I understand they're walking around town all day, but then they go to the restaurant and they're in these sneakers, and I'm like, oh, obviously they're tourists. <laughs> yeah. But if you have something like this, yeah, it doesn't have to be yeah. like that. Yeah, you don't have to wear yeah. sneakers to be comfortable. Exactly. I think that I that's it. a big um, misnomer. These, I think, are just as comfortable as sneakers, and you know they're open and airy, so yeah. you don't get all sweaty. Yeah. <laughs> um, but anyways, loving some corks. 
So okay, cool. those are our favorites for March. I hope you enjoyed watching along with us. Um, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss mm -hmm. our next video and you can follow us on all the social medias. We are currently on Pinterest, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. So if you're into any of those, um, just search at Inside the Hem and you'll find us there. Awesome. So until our next video, all right. bye bye. bye.